What is up guys, welcome back to North Outdoors. Today we're coming at you with another catch and cook. So, we just got back from Lake of the Woods and we've got two nice verbal we're gonna clean up for you and I think we're gonna cook them. Al, how are we gonna prepare these guys? So, we have a couple ideas. Probably we're just gonna fry one up. Um, we'll take you through the fillet process, show you step by step. They're a little tricky to fillet, so we wanna bring you along the ride for that. So we'll probably fry one up and then we'll see if we can find any bits quick. If not, um, we'll let you know later what we're gonna do. So stay tuned. Here's the burbot. Take a look at that. Um, first things first, I know you want to know how we caught that, so we're going to cut to that right here. Give me two seconds to get the hands on. Yep. Fight them out, fight them out. Yep. It's a big fish. Alright guys, well... I've been fishing for two hours here with no bites, and uh, well, we're hooked into something pretty big. So, is there is another guy down there, or I think? Well, I see this guy. He's still on bottom. Yeah. Is that the guy that just swam by? It must be. Okay. We'll find him out. This this has to be a bird. <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> he's fighting like yeah, he's right there. You see him? Yeah, he's on. Oh, you want to pull the whole cover? Yeah. He came out pretty quick. Oh my god, dude. I hope you're ready for the for the grab. Oh Holy shit. He feels really heavy. Oh bro. Oh I see him. Yeah, it's a verb, it's a verb. <laughs> Damn it. We take those, we take those. Yeah, smart. <laughs> Oh, I'll go open that bell, open that bell. Oh. He's here, he's here. Oh, oh, there he is. Oh, he's a beast. <laughs> yes. The verb. <laughs> the rock pile. The rock pile. One of our smaller birds actually, but we got him. Wow. He's dynamic. Yeah, he is dynamic. Yes. Oh. Come on. Burb. Woohoo! Alrighty guys. There we go. That is a burbot. Uh, kind of weird fish, but that is definitely something. It gave me a good fight. All right, we're gonna get some measurements on this guy and uh, get him on the ice. That's dinner right there. We'll bring you guys to a little clip of us cooking this guy up and tasting him. So we'll see how that goes. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed that fight. That was awesome. So. Here's a burbot. This guy's about four pounds. This is a pretty average size burbot on Lake of the Woods, I would say. We have another one that's a little bit bigger, but this isn't a bad fish here. So a lot of fish, it's pretty. there's pretty much one way you can clean 99% of fish. You can clean burbot like that, but I find that it's not the most efficient. So what we're gonna start off by doing is we're gonna skin the burbot. And Alex has not done this before, so I'm pretty excited for him to. Now, so I'm gonna learn right us up alongside you guys. This is my first burbot filet, so I'm, I'm pretty stoked. All right, so the first step here is you're just gonna make a circular cut around the burbot. Fun fact about burbot is uh, their testicles can actually be up to 20% of their body weight. Yeah, that's a great fun fact. <laughs> yeah, it is. All right, Al. I think their livers are also pretty big, aren't they? They are, Yeah. as you can tell. Okay, here for the fun part. Okay. What you're gonna do, you're gonna grab this top part of the skin here with the pliers. Okay. I, would, I would use a small one. Small pliers. Yep, grab that top part of the skin. Okay. Just like right under there? Yeah, right under there. Okay. Pull back. Keep going? Keep going. Do I have too much meat? Mm, seems like you have a little too much meat. Yeah, I'm gonna grab here. Right? Yep. Try right there. Okay, Get so got a better grip on the top of the skin. Mm -hmm. First grab, I took a little bit of too much meat, so there we go. And this gets a lot easier once you kind of get it going. Yeah. All right, guys, so we just want to give you a little bit better view of what we're doing here. So like I said, I'm just grabbing the skin. RJ's telling me to pull back slowly, and RJ's using his fingers to kind of guide that fillet down. We're not losing too much meat um, and trying to focus on the skin. So I see RJ's wanting me to pull here while, he, while I pull the skin. He grabs most of the meat. Mm -hmm. Tough right here. There's some tricky parts. I'll try and grab it. A little bit. Not overly concerned about this belly meat here. It's not a ton of meat on no. a small fish like this. So, but there you can. go. There we go. That was a good. That was a good save. Yeah. Once you kind of get it going, it gets yeah, a lot easier. Yeah. The belly meat. The belly meat has been momentum for us here. Yeah. 
All right, let's go back to the top side. Okay. Try to make a nice pull. Okay, good pull here. There it is, folks. That is how he's going to burp. Oh, oh, right there. Okay, time out. Oh, okay, we've lost our grip. And we're back. <laughs> it's basically a tug of war game. It's not, it's not really the prettiest thing you can do. I hope this doesn't get demonetized. <laughs> there it goes. And just like that, guys. So there you have Boom. it. That's a perfectly skin. We're gonna need to wash this guy off. But as you can see, all mm -hmm. the skin comes right off, all the way down to the tail. So now I'm going to be able to just take the meat off right from here. And all the guts also just come right out like that too, which is honestly super convenient. So we're going to wash off these cutting boards and get to clean this fish. Stay tuned. Boom. All right, so what's the next step here, RJ? All right, well, we could take the guts out, but I don't really want to risk puncturing anything. So I'm not going to do that. <laughs> okay. Just as I do it. All right, so you got your burbot, right? Mm -hmm. now, there's a few main parts of a burbot you can get. Uh, the main two fillets I'm going to take are right on this back tail. So from here out, this is sort of similar to like the pike five fillet method if you've done that before. But Burba do have very large bones. So what I'm doing is I'm feeling for the rib cage on this bottom side here, where it ends. I'm going to come in. Okay, right to the bone there. Then I'm just going to ride along the back here. And now it is kind of tricky to get this exactly right. And you do end up losing some meat because just the way the Burba's bones are really large. So there's a little bit of a fillet, and then we'll take this last part here. It's not really much on a smaller fish like this. And this is the spine right here, if you want to feel that out. Yeah, that's some big so That's bones. like rock hard, like that is yeah. bone. So like, like huh. kind of like a wallet, it's difficult to ride like all the way up here. But then- and Is this then uh, boneless then, RJ? It's perfectly boneless fillet. Wow, yeah, that's amazing. Look yeah, at that so, white flash too, super cool. Yeah, so it's like a nice burber fillet right there. It's got a firm texture to it, just like a cod, but we'll kind of get into the taste factor and cooking it up a little later. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Second, you got like your top two straps here. It's kind of thinking of like the back straps on a deer, right? Yep. So top exactly. two right over the rib cage. So if you've, you know, flayed other fish, you know that you can kind of just ride down the rib cage. Rib, it's not really much different. So I'm gonna ride that down up top. You see, I'm getting the rib cage there. Mm -hmm. And you get a pretty decent chunk of meat here too. Yeah, it's a really good chunk, actually. Yep. And so this is going to be perfect. We're going to cube this up. I'm really a fan of taking your burbot and just frying it up like you would a walleye. And last time I did it, I did it for Alex and pancake batter. It's very good. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, that was the first and only burbot I've had. So we're going to try and mix the things up a little bit and kind of bring you along for, for the ride here. Trying not to look any bones here. Is the bones on these things are gnarly. Nice. All right, piece. so there's another nice piece, guys. As you can see, both these pieces are boneless. And so that's right here off the top side, this this rib part right here. Mm -hmm. Gonna go ahead and then grab the next fillet off the back here. So I'm feeling for where that rib cage ends. Looks like right about here. Cutting in. Yeah, the, the only weird part about this is like you can't, it's difficult to run your knife right along that. Because of kind of, it seems like it's kind of cavitated in like a little it bit. It is, yeah. On the bones, that's kind of the first thing I'm noticing. It like is tail piece. Yep, and yeah, the tail actually came right off there. I'm gonna oh, cut that off. That's a good deal. That's okay. a really nice knife, RJ. Where'd you get that knife? Oh yeah, this is actually the Gone Fishing Outdoor Series fillet kit, and it's the same place we got this cutting board too. Yeah, this is actually great. It saved me a lot of trouble on a lot of trips we've gone on. So no, it's it's super handy. Um, we we love this fillet kit. We use it all the time. So like Vermilion Lake of the Woods. Yeah, yeah. I'll drop a link in the description box down below. Yeah, if you want to check it out, looking for your first fillet kit, um, we love it. There's good stuff. So check it out down below, like RJ said. Anyway, continuing on with this uh, burbot. We're just taking that second uh, backstrap piece that RJ was talking about earlier up from the top. Kind of watching, learning. Again, this is my first burbot that I've seen cleaned. Um, so I'm learning right alongside you guys. Yeah, I think this is a super underrated fish. Uh, you know, back in the day, people used to just throw these guys out on the ice, but I do think more appreciation is coming through for them as people kind of realize what a great fight they are, as you can see in that video I showed you, and the fact that they're just they're awesome to eat, so. Yeah, they're very tasty. There's really nothing to lose. They get big, they fight <laughs> hard. Uh, yeah, I, I love them. One, yeah. They're definitely like one of my favorite fish of all time. Another cool fun fact about uh, burbot, um, they are the only freshwater caught 
So, yep. you know, you go into Culver's, you get a cod sandwich, that's, you know, salt water. But this, freshwater cod species, same species of, you know, a fish, so that's super cool. So right here, guys, there you go. As you can see, I got most of the meat off this thing. Um, not really a conventional fish filleting method, but it works pretty well. And you kind of end up with these nice four pieces right here. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it is it is less meat than you'd expect off a fish this big. And like I was mentioning about, like, the gut size, like, these things have a lot of guts. Mm -hmm. yeah, I did go through the ribcage on that one, so we have to trim it up a little bit. But <clears throat> Yeah, we're just kind of showing them, like, what... But, yeah, so that's what the kind of fillets you can expect are. Nice white meat. And we're going to cube these up and fry them. But first, let's get to the other bourbon. Here we go. Kind of speed through that one because you saw this, but guys, here's our second bourbon. This one's a little bit bigger, six pound fish. I'm just gonna share one quick tip with you. When you catch your bourbon, what I like to do is cut right here. If you can see that, right through the gills. These fish have a ton of blood, like more blood than any fish I've ever seen. So I cut their gills and they bleed out right on the ice, pretty good. And that I think really improves the meat quality. So we get that super nice white meat. All right, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and skin this one. We'll probably just speed through that for you guys here. Stomach. Holy Ooh. crap. That's a short. Look at this. Yeah, that's that's incredible. What even is that? Right, is that a swim ready? bladder? Ready? Or is that all stomach? Dude, that's all stomach. Hold yeah. on. Oh, back. Ready? Oh. Yeah. Alright, Al, one you can talk. You got it. Yeah. Alrighty guys. Hold on. Okay, Alrighty guys, we're just cleaning up this burbot we caught at Lake of the Woods and look at his stomach. This thing is absolutely full. Well, let's see what's in there, guys. Wow, no. look at that. It's like a grocery store crawfish. Look how many crawfish, crawfish are in there. That is absolutely insane. Oh look my. at these crawfish. That, take, a, take a look at that. That is crazy. There's so many of them in there. And this is crazy because, you know, Burbot loved to hang out on rocks. And while we are fishing, we saw a lot of crawfish down there on the rocks. So I guess try your crawfish presentations. And we did actually catch a lot of, a lot of Burbot on big rattling baits, kind of like a craw. So maybe that's why they're honing in on that. But that is insane to see how many craw he's got in there. This man was full. RJ, you know what I'm excited for? If this guy was eating crawfish, I mean, hey. Oh, that's got to be good meat. That's right? got to be good meat. All right, well, back to your regularly scheduled cleaning program here. But, wow, that's that's crazy. I mean, that is a ton it of crawfish. It is full of it's crawfish. It's literally full. Wow. Alright guys, with these two are cleaning up their nice little mess from cleaning the burbot, as you can see. Uh, we're going to do a little experiment and see how much meat we get off of a 6 pound burbot and a 4 pound burbot. So we'll start with the 6 pounder. Well, we get about 16 ounces, so a pound of meat, which isn't very good, but like they were saying before, most of the meat is, the, or most of the weight's in the testicles, so that's understandable. Just like me. <laughs> <laughs> RG says that's similar to him, if you didn't catch that. Up the four pounder, you get about 10 ounces, so I don't know what the ratio there is, but you don't get much meat off the burbot, but they, it does taste good, so. Alrighty guys, so we just finished cleaning up the burbot, and uh, this is a little recipe that I kind of accidentally discovered one time, and Al came over to try it. Al, what'd you think? It was amazing. It was so good. I mean, I, at first, you know, hearing about burbot, looking at burbot, I'm like, hmm, that can't taste good. But I came over to Arjun's house with this recipe that we're about to show you guys. Amazing. Like, I'm craving this stuff right now, so. Alright, so we started with a little bit of Bisquick. So I'm literally just taking the Bisquick and using the classic pancakes recipe that's right on there. So two cups of Bisquick, an egg, and some milk. And that's pretty much it. And then we're going to add a little bit of other seasoning. So a touch of salt here. And then I got garlic powder and onion powder. You can't really ever go wrong with those. Any measurements you want to add, RJ? Some. <laughs> here, well, how about this? To taste. Oh, yeah, that's right. a good one. Alright, we're going to mix that up. And then we're gonna cut our burbot up into little nuggets here and pretty generously coat it in this stuff. And it, it's it's really amazing. I mean, yeah, you just go straight into vegetable oil, right? Straight into some hot oil, and I'll show you guys how we do that until it's a nice golden brown color. The only downside about this is it's 
It's a thick batter, so it's kind of hard to tell when your bourbon's done. Mm. But okay. once you know, you know. It's sort of an experience thing. <laughs> yeah, you'll we'll have the have the tingles about when it's done. Yep, once it's a nice golden brown color. And How hot do you want the oil? <laughs> hot. <laughs> what are we at, guys? 360, 370. Pretty good. It's pretty team solid. All right, so there you have it. So this is pretty thick batter here, and you get you get a pretty generous coating on your brewery, which kind of adds to the flavor. And you can have them. Uh, I think last time I started them in burritos or plain. It was tacos. Yeah, tacos. Yeah. 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 So yeah. you can put them in tacos, just like any fried fish, fish mm -hmm. tacos, whatever. Or you can just have them plain. I think we might do that tonight. But yep. We'll, we'll see what's up. We'll see. All, All right. right. Stay tuned. There we go. So Alex cubing up the bourbon here into these nice chunks. I'm going to be dipping them into our pancake batter serum here. Get them pretty, pretty generously coated. This can't be too healthy, but whatever. So something like that. This is the first one going in the oil. We'll see how it is, and if we're happy with it, we'll just keep doing it. Because we can always season the pancake batter, doesn't it? I like the beer and the pancake batter idea. Yeah. All right, so I made a little sauce for the burbot. It's amazing, apparently, according to Al. So, put a good amount of mayo, followed by a hint of mustard, and some buffalo sauce, and whipped it all together. Looks, I don't know, light red. Pretty tasty. What's the name of that buffalo sauce you're using, guys? Oh, it's Slap Your Mama. <laughs> they make great products. Link will be in the description. Oh, yeah. That's good stuff. All right, well, I got the second batch of rivet going. Uh, we made a few adjustments, so what I did was a thinner breading on the rivet, first of all, and then I turned down the cook temperature, and I'm kind of trying to get a little more low and slow because last time we had a kind of problem with overcooked batter, undercooked fish, so we're kind of cracking there to see if we can get that one right. Sounds like my whole team. Yeah. You want to try this? Like, no, I think. What? All right, guys, so pretty much what we did is after, uh, you saw them on the vegetable oil, we pulled it off, put it in the oven for a little bit, let it sit, crisp over real nice. This is the final product here. Take a look at that. So, we're gonna give it a try, RJ. All right, here we go. Grab this one. Mine already has a little sauce, I guess I'll add a little bit more. And here's some bourbon. Wow. Wow. Oh. That is delicious. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. That lighter batter plus just the way it just falls apart. Mm -hmm. And then Gus's secret sauce. You can't forget about that. Gus's secret sauce is truly one of the greatest elements of our generation. Mm -hmm. I mean, this stuff is amazing. Wow, that's really good, folks. Definitely would recommend this. So, try the Bisquick. Love the bourbon. Saw how we filleted it. And hopefully you can enjoy it too. Alrighty guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you want to see more different river recipes, feel free to leave a comment down below. Or if you have a favorite way that you do it that we didn't do, if you got a better way to clean it, please feel free to let me know. I've only cleaned a few of these fish in my day and I would yeah. always look for new tips, looking for ways to improve. But yeah, if you want to see more content like this, feel free to subscribe. I think we'll have a pike video coming next week. So yeah. stay tuned. Remember folks, nobody owns the water. Ciao.